The MO27Q28G is a 27 inch 1440p 280Hz brand new four layer W OLED panel from LG that promises to deliver far better color as well as potentially higher brightness and better ambient light handling all for a pretty reasonable price. And this particular model also comes with one DisplayPort 1.4 port, two HDMI 2.1, it has type C. And talking about that price, well, it should be available roughly around $550 plus or minus a bit in the US depending on tariffs and also hopefully available pretty soon here. It was supposed to already actually be launched, but I, I don't know what's going on. It should hopefully be available in the next you know couple of weeks here or at the very latest, maybe by the end of the year, but with a three-year warranty as well. Well, on paper, this looks like it could be the perfect OLED for those of you out there looking for an affordable 1440p OLED with basically no major compromises. So to say that I was excited to review this thing would be an understatement. So let's jump right into that review to find out if this is really worth the hype or if it's gonna be disappointing. And let's start off with that color first because do they actually achieve better color? And the answer is yes, and it's obvious. In fact, this is now at a point where if you put it next to a QD OLED, they're both gonna look great. And I don't think, at least in most cases, the one or the other is going to look obviously better when it comes to color. I think you'll be very satisfied with either option. And that's something I couldn't say before and a huge upgrade for W OLED, making it an option for far more people out there who might've been considering considering QD OLED otherwise. I mean, especially considering that this can also get brighter. When those bright colors do hit the screen, it definitely hits in a way that I haven't seen with any other monitor before, period. And so if you've been after W OLED, but you wish I had better color, this might actually be it. And by the way, I will have affiliate links in the description below to this monitor. It was also provided for review by Gigabyte to me, but I will be sending it back and it won't be changing my opinions on the review. But what about the actual accuracy of the panel? Because this has been a problem for LG. Has Gigabyte been able to solve it? Well, taking a look at SDR first, you can see that in the sRGB mode, it is actually pretty decent out of the box. Both the RGB balance as well as the EOTF tracking is pretty good overall, although it does appear to be unfortunately raising some shadow detail, which is in my books, a big no-no. Although when it comes to the color checker analysis, well, it does very good here. So SDR content is actually gonna look pretty dang accurate with an average Delta E of just one 0.5, although when it comes to HDR, it's not quite as good. So in the default HDR, the RGB balance is pretty good overall, but the other modes are where it gets definitely worse. So the HDR game mode has some blown out highlights, the HDR movie mode, unfortunately slightly under tracks, and the HDR peak 1500 mode, which should be the brightest mode, unfortunately also has some blown out highlights in this test. And I will tell you guys that also pretty much all HDR content for one reason or another on all these settings did did have some issues with accuracy when it came to the brightness. So there's something going on there when it comes to the automatic brightness limiter or something like that. However, the color checker analysis for HDR was also pretty decent with an average Delta E of 3.69. And get this, the HDR BT 2020 gamut coverage, well, they've jumped from the low 70 percentages on older panels to nearly 83%, which is pretty much right there with QD OLED. So as a whole, yes, the color is way better. The accuracy on this thing is also way better than the L G model, and I do think that it's pretty good, although not perfect. But speaking of HDR accuracy, let's talk about HDR because you know, is this gonna blow you away? And I think the answer is gonna be for most people, no. If you've never seen HDR, yeah, it'll definitely be impressive considering how much brighter the colors can get on this new panel. And in fact, I think it's probably the best that I've seen as a whole in terms of HDR impact, in my opinion, but it's not by a lot. So take a look here at my brightness testing and you'll see that it's kind of in the middle of the pack. It's not necessarily this way brighter panel that you would expect. It's actually dimmer than last generation panels. So it seems like they're unfortunately trading some of that brightness for color. We're seeing in 100% window 344 nits, which is actually really great. But the 10% window, it's a regression. We used to get closer to 800 nits in previous generation panels. Now we're down to 639 nits, and that is extremely disappointing. We really need to get up to 1,000 nits to display HDR properly. And in a real game here, Baldur's Gate 3, you can see that this trend continues. It's not just in these test patterns. Here, once again, the Gigabyte MO27Q28G, while it does a little bit brighter, it's still pretty much in line with every other OLED that's ever been made, so there's not really any improvements here, and a TV is absolutely demolishing it. 
it. So yeah, it's great that the color brightness is better. And as a whole, I think it actually looks better despite the brightness going down, but a regression in brightness is absolutely ridiculous and hugely disappointing to see now out of multiple fourth generation W OLEDs in a row. So hopefully they're just being a little bit conservative with the first generation and maybe some other companies will push it harder and hopefully the second generation gets much, much brighter because if not, well, that's gonna be really disappointing. However, one thing that's not disappointing is the ambient light handling. Fourth generation matte W OLEDs are almost the best that has ever been created created just behind fourth generation glossy W OLED when it comes to ambient light handling and look at QD OLED in comparison. Yeah, you can see why in a bright room, this is gonna be a really excellent choice. And it's also gonna be an excellent choice for gaming because take a look here at the latency, 24 milliseconds puts it as one of the fastest monitors that I've ever tested. And this is in comparison to other extremely fast monitors. And thanks to it being OLED, not only are you getting per pixel illumination, for excellent micro contrast, but you also get the near instantaneous response times that comes with OLED as well. Take a look at this chart here. Look at 280 Hertz, how clear in motion at this extra fast speed that this W OLED can really get. I mean, we're getting pretty close to the example image and in motion, this is going to absolutely tear apart lower refresh rate W OLEDs, but also take a look at it in comparison to 120 Hertz mini LED. It is night and day how much more clear this thing is in motion motion, meaning you can track your targets with far better accuracy, especially in fast paced games. Then we also have to talk about its features. If you want to use binoculars while gaming, you can use different aspect ratios and it does have flicker free technology, which will change the VRR range to hopefully try and reduce some of that flickering in dark scenes, which is great to have on a monitor. Also, this new panel still is RGWB, so you can expect enhanced text clarity. And I think overall it doesn't look too bad. However, one thing that's definitely gonna be a huge negative for a lot of people and certainly was with me is that this is not a glossy panel. Unfortunately, it is a matte panel, which some people do like as it can turn direct reflections into diffused reflections. It doesn't stop them, it just changes them, but it comes at the cost of clarity. In fact, it comes at a massive cost of clarity and I certainly would not recommend a matte coating over a glossy coating to pretty much anyone because that hit to clarity, well, it's very significant and it's certainly very noticeable at higher resolutions, but even at 1440p, I do find it significantly noticeable and it does lead to a somewhat grainy and sparkly look to the monitor that is very distracting to me. And yes, it will look like it's just not quite as crisp or clear as if it had a glossy coating. So hopefully the glossy panel that should be launching in January will be a better fit for a lot of people out there looking for the highest clarity possible out of a 1440p monitor. And another thing that is a bit of a shame is that the viewing angles on this, well, they're not great. There's definitely some color shifting when viewed at an angle, but for most people who will be using it straight on, probably not gonna bother you. And also in terms of issues, it did have some problems when I was first reviewing it. That's why this review is delayed, but they have since been addressed via firmware update. So if you do get this monitor, please be sure to check their website for a firmware update as there were some significant HDR issues with the original firmware that I was testing. But otherwise everything was great. The menu was great and there weren't any major problems. So the MO27, Q28G with this new panel, it's certainly very impressive. And I think the future of W OLED is certainly very bright, especially considering color brightness is way better. It's a huge upgrade in the panel itself is awesome, but it's not perfect. Unfortunately, that color brightness improvement has come at the cost of lower brightness overall, which is definitely a shame. It also still suffers from viewing angle problems and the matte coating significantly reduces clarity to a point where I would definitely wait for the glossy version I was told will be launching in January, which will certainly give you better image quality. And so for all those reasons, while I do think this is a great monitor, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a seven out of 10. It's definitely a great monitor, but it's held back by some minor issues when it comes to the clarity, the brightness, as well as some very small issues with accuracy as well that could lift it up, hopefully with a second revision using a glossy panel and maybe they can boost the brightness to give you a refined version of this monitor that basically perfects it in every single one of those categories. And I can't wait to see what they do with 4K four layer W OLEDs in 2026, as I do believe those will be coming. And yeah, I think those might just be for a lot of people, kind of like the end game monitor.